Flash is gone and Adobe Animate is here. Is this the big revamp we needed to breathe new life into Flash or do the changes fall short? Let's take a look. <laughs> Let's just kind of go through the list that Adobe provided. So the first thing they list is CC Libraries is here now. Yay! Adobe Color Themes have been moved here, so you don't need a separate extension panel for that. And then there's also the ability to search the Adobe Stock Image Library, so you can give Adobe their money. I don't think I'm ever going to use this for anything, ever. Up next is Typekit. For Typekit, you need to be in an HTML5 canvas. I believe OpenGL works as well. And you need to have a dynamic text box. This little button right here. And we can access Typekit. This is another one I don't really see myself using. Now, here's one that I actually really like the new art brushes. Uh, it's been put on the Y key on your keyboard, replacing the pencil. The pencil is now Shift Y. So we'll pull up the art brush, and then you'll see over here we have access to a brush library, and this works a lot like the one in Illustrator. Uh, so I can choose uh, Feather Pencil. So yeah, this is pretty nice. It's one less time that you have to jump back and forth between Flash and Illustrator, and I'm glad that they've integrated this. I have noticed that uh, it kind of makes the scene run choppier, especially once you have a lot of this stuff. It gets really laggy, so my computer is very far from being weak, and this could be a huge problem if you're doing this on like a laptop or something, it just won't work. Here's another one that I like, it's uh, tagged swatches, so let me put that back to normal. So a purple one, a hot pink one, and a turquoise, a oh, light blue, whatever. Um, so once I have this selected, I can go down here to create tagged swatch, name it a color, and then uh, just for demonstration, I'll put another box here and another one there. So if I go down here and I change this color, it'll update all of the ones on stage that use that swatch. It's pretty nice. It'll make re like going back and changing colors a lot easier in the future, so I really like this change. Another new update is the uh, stage scaling. Um, now, uh, scaling up exported SWS hasn't been an issue, but say you're compiling a bunch of smaller animations into one, and one person didn't put theirs the right size. So say we want this to be 720p. You can check the scale content box, and then just change it and there you go, it's the right size. This will also come in handy for moving things over to After Effects and such. Also with the stage scaling, if you have 3D transformations, like in this right here, it, uh, it just screws up. It does not like that at all. Yeah, and then it has this weird graphical glitch with the dark gray there. So, Adobe, fix it. All right, now the next one is something that I really don't understand too much. Uh, we have stage rotation, which you've been able to do in Photoshop for a while. Um, to do this, you hold shift and space, and then you can drag to rotate, simple enough. Except it doesn't work with the tablet. You can see if I try to rotate, it just does absolutely nothing this kind of boggles my mind because that's the only scenario in which I think I would ever use the feature is if I'm using my tablet and it just doesn't work. Another thing with the stage rotation is that it also has issues with 3D transformation. So if I hold shift space and then drag it, um, yeah, it, it does that. So not exactly ideal, Adobe. Here's another new thing, we have color-coded onion skins. So uh, the current stuff is red, and then future is green, and past is blue. Now I, I personally found that just scrubbing to see how motion works when I have the onion skin on works well enough in helping me determine what's ahead and what's behind, but this does have the added benefit of looking really, 
really cool. Look at and then this also works with these solid ones. Man, that, just, that looks really cool. <laughs> okay. Another new feature is scalable video exporting. I imagine this works off the same principle as the stage resizing. Um, so like this document is uh, 720p, but we can render it out at 1080p. What this does is it still uses the ancient QuickTime exporter and then it just sends it over to Media Encoder to do the rest of the work. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm ever going to actually use this. I'll just kind of stick to swivel or just dropping it straight into After Effects because that usually works A-OK -okay and it doesn't take nearly as long. The files it creates are also absurdly large. That little like 15 second clip is over 2 gigabytes. So just stay away from the video exporter. It's still terrible. Now this next one is something that I got really excited about. Uh, there's OAM export. For those of you who don't know, OAM was the uh, single package export from Adobe Edge Animate, which is being killed off by Adobe. Um, now the part that got me excited was that on Adobe's documentation they specified that you could export action script to OAMs and I thought this is really cool. I can just take an existing flash file and export it in an HTML5 format without having to do any changes. But nope! Uh, it doesn't work that way at all so I'll go ahead and publish this, pull up something in Muse and try to place it. So here's the OAM file. You'll see that when we place it, it looks looks fine, right? Uh, take this off. There's the footer button. But when I go to preview it, yeah, looks good. Except it's just they just stuck a flash file inside an OAM. It doesn't actually do anything. And this is kind of lame. I, why not just use the SWF, which I can actually resize. Lame. Mega lame. Another one I'm not going to bother showing is there's now static text in HTML5 canvases. All it does is convert it to outlines. There's nothing exciting. It's nothing interesting. I'm not going to bother. Nobody uses that. Now here's one that I am actually excited for. We can finally, finally import SVG files. Uh, ooh, which one should I pick? Um, Let's go for... I want that one. Yeah, that one. And it actually supports layers. I can import everything to a different layer. It can resize the stage. And it just works perfectly, from what I can tell. Uh, everything's still there. Gradients, this one doesn't have gradients, but gradients do come in perfectly. Everything just works. It's glorious. And it's about time they added this, because we've been able to export SVGs, but we can't bring them back into Flash, which is kind of dumb. Another thing that's new is there are better bounding boxes now. So uh, if I take this off here, break it apart, and then I just kind of uh, bind them together into an object, you can see that instead of just having a bounding box like a symbol or the objects used to have, it actually shows the strokes on this object, which is a nice touch, and it makes it feel a little bit more Illustrator, which is a good thing. Now another thing that they mentioned was that there is uh, support for projector files, which I, I see nothing new here, there aren't even settings for it. Projector files have been in Flash for a really, really long time, I don't know why it's on the new list. Here's the thing, I was really, really ready to hate this update, I mean, they talked it up with the big name change, I was expecting a major overhaul to the software, but when I opened it up for the first time, it just looked like Flash. There's not really all that much new. But if I look past the name change and just treat it as the 0.1 incremental update that it is, I think they really did do a good job of adding new features and improvements to it. We'll have to wait and see what they can do with the 2016 release. So I don't think this update has quite earned the name change. I wish they had held off on that until they had something a bit more substantial to show for it, but for what it is, it's all right. That's all I have for you today. Thumbs, comments, subs, you know the drill. If there's any tutorials you want to see for this software, just let me know. Thanks for watching.